Hello and welcome to this afternoon taste challenge. Doing this because of scheduling reasons. Uh, so I had to do, do a double up today. Next week. Oh, next week should be normal, like uh, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I mean, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so I have from 1903, and this is the last of it. Look, the last of the leader. Oh, man. Age three years, 80 proof Kentucky Tavern. Some of you viewers know about Kentucky Tavern. <coughs> Another one of the multitude of Sazerac Buffalo Trace brands. It's actually coming from Buffalo Trace. You can see it on their website, greatbourbon.com. And, uh, oh, I guess it's not too popular. I mean, do you ever hear people talking about Kentucky Tavern? I don't think you do. But I guess it sells well enough to keep being produced. Um, and then we have Virginia Black from 2016. So this one's only three years old. It's only aged two years. Well, it's a mixture. Well, any 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 whiskey that gives an age statement, um, it's going to be the 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 youngest whiskey in the blend. Okay. But now with Kentucky Tavern, it's probably a uh -oh. that's not good. It's probably uh, just one whiskey that's aged three years. That's the impression I get. Could be from different barrels. They sometimes mingle the barrels to get the right consistency, but it's probably just. That and then here you have the blend. But if you do in a blend of whiskeys, what, what I was trying, what happened? What I was trying to say. Sorry about this. I got some stuff in the wrong spot. It's um, required that you it, that you list the youngest whiskey as the age of the entire product. Okay. Right. So I don't think it's going to be much of a challenge in the videos. Robert Collins says, "Cheers, Jay. Cheers to you, Robert." And, uh, you know, so I don't think it's going to take a very, very long time to tell, tell these apart. In fact, when I did this morning's taste challenge, uh, I was able to guess it in it, right off the bat, just first sniff and a new that fast. So it's going to probably happen when I do Virginia Black against these bourbons. But I don't feel bad about it because it's a blend of bourbons. You know, so I'm not crossing styles exactly. Yeah, these are straight bourbon, and this is a blend of it, but it's still within the same same category, kind of. All right, uh, a bourbon concoction. Although I guess straight bourbon would be more true, a purist item. And the thing about these, they can be, uh, these blended ones, they can be colored. So I don't think you'd get that dark of a color here in my right hand. Do you think you'd get that dark of a color after two years? I'm pretty sure you wouldn't. But on the other hand, that Redemption Rye, High rye, retention high rye. It says age at least one year. Well, they don't say two, so you know it's probably just one. Uh, and it's light, but it's darker than you would expect after a year. So, but they claim they use an alligator char, the thickest char. So maybe, maybe that's the case here at what MGP is doing up there in Indiana with the Virginia Black. It's still an unusual flavor. It doesn't taste like any bourbon I ever had. And I've had a, a, a lot. So the whole thing about it is unusual. And I'm not sure if I like it. Now, my friend David, right off the bat, he just said, I don't like it. 
that's dust flavor. There's something wrong with it. It tastes candy like weird. No, I think it has, does taste candy like, but some bourbons to me taste like candy. So I'll mix them up and uh, we'll do the taste challenge. I should have been mixing them while I was talking. Um, I don't see. I've never I, I never heard of it till I ran across it at Savannah Discount. Okay, so I didn't know. I never heard chatter like, "Oh, you had Virginia Black." But then on the other hand, I don't really talk to people so much about whiskey. Now, people that I talk to about whiskey are generally people that comment on my channel. I'm trying to look up so I don't glance at it. Um, and they've asked me questions, you know, when you're going to do Maker's Mark, stuff like that. So you hear about that one. The $38.99 for Virginia Black, I see that in the Do people buy it? Well, they might. I, I don't, I never asked the manager there, does that stuff sell or anything like that? It's in a nice box, really nice looking box. No, so I just don't know. And I don't know if the target audience is going to be buying it because I don't think they generally drink whiskey. They more of a cognac more like a Hennessy crowd. And I saw some of the videos about it. They were interviewing rap stars and they were like, I could see drinking this over Hennessy. Well, maybe, you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, I know what I, I do kind of follow what people drink in general. And I don't know if the Hennessy E and J VS crowd is going to really go for, um, Although the Hennessy and the Virginia Black is comparably priced, but that that's another reason. I don't know if they're going to jump, even if it's a lateral move, a lateral move because of the, it's just that whiskey taste and brandy, cognac brandy, brandy, American brandy, California brandy has a different um, taste. It's just got, it's not the same. Okay. Oh, this, there is a lot of pollen in the air, and I can't look now. It's got my nose bothered. Hold on. Sorry about that on this live video. <laughs> I see everybody with their nose. I don't, I'm not sick or anything. It just kind of bothers me sometimes, but I see everybody around here. Well, it's bad here anyway. It's always humid. It's like cloudy, muggy, full of mold in the air, so... Arizona might be a better place for you to avoid sinus issues, but here is just like guaranteed. Now I've noticed lately all this oak, the oak trees full of pollen. It's it could really make your eyes water and whatnot. Okay, so here we go. I think I'll guess it that fast, and then I'll read comments if there are any. <laughs> I think that's the I almost said Hennessy. <laughs> I think that's the Virginia Black, but. Yep, this is the Kentucky Tavern. That's the Virginia Black on aroma only. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. Well, I can open my eyes now. Yeah, Virginia Black. Um, and KT. <laughs> KT, Virginia Black. But I'll tell you how I could tell. I'm, it's going to be like this for the rest of the bourbons, I think. It's going to be that fast. I'll be like, one sniff, Virginia Black. <laughs> the You do get charred oak. Okay, you're getting that. You're getting barrel. And it's kind of like when you're in the barrel house and it's seeping out and you get like a thick stuff. It's almost like a syrup leaking out. It's I, I put some of that on my hand at one place and it smells like that. And MGP is a huge place, which I would like to tour. They don't give tours to people. I would love to write them. But they're changing, so maybe they'll give tours. They were talking about that, kind of talking about that. And the lady was saying, well, it's not just like you decide to do tours. She was saying in an in, interview, there's all kind of regulations that you got to 
it's got to be safety things. It's a big hassle. It's you don't just say, well, let's have tours. Uh, it's a rich aroma. It there is more wood coming out than I've detected this morning, and I don't know why that is. But there's still that underlying strange note that you I can't you can't pin it down. But it, this is it's just so different than the bourbon that it tips you off. It's kind of like a little clue that you shouldn't have gotten, like somebody playing Trivia Pursuit. The Queen of England is from what country? You know, that kind of thing. You say, I don't know, England? Oh, I just didn't say England. That kind of thing. There's something tipping me off here. The Kentucky Tavern is just like standard, standard Buffalo Trace bourbon. Which means, the, to my best explanation, it's like sourdough bread. A certain, but you see, it's hard to describe like a yeast profile. You know, like when you're drinking Budweiser and Anheuser Busch, especially Budweiser, but Anheuser Busch beers have like this house feel. It's almost like a feeling, a vibe to them, and it's the yeast strain. And you can kind of pick it out and say, I know people are saying, when are you going to do more beer challenges? I got to make a dedication to do more beer taste challenges. I just always find that I never do it. Because I'll say, well, I want to do something else. I want to do this. I want to do that. <coughs> but I could do them live, really. Why well, couldn't I do them? I could do them live. Um, but there's some, it's almost like this is like a young Buffalo Trace. What is Buffalo Trace age? Four years? Does it even give an age statement? But that would mean a minimum of four years. This is. The Kentucky Tavern is like in that realm, and it's got that clean. I can't, there's something. It's like um, not a nuttiness. It's the same thing. Get Ancient Age. Mm hmm. Go buy Ancient Age. That's only nine ninety nine. But the the Kentucky Tavern was ten ninety nine. For a liter, oh yeah, ten ninety nine for a liter, <laughs> but they're very very similar. And I heard some commenters saying, "Oh, I tried that stuff. That stuff's awful. It's horrible." Talking about Kentucky Tavern, and I'm thinking, "Are you sure you're talking about the same thing I drank?" He might be thinking of Kentucky Gentleman, which is not to me awful. It's just bland. It's a blended bourbon, forty nine percent grain neutral spirits. It's kind of like what I'm drinking now or sniffing now, but with washed out. But it's not horrible. All right, to me. <laughs> it's got that weird minty thing going on. It's like mint, but yet not mint. It's that taffy, saltwater taffy. But you know that's not in it. But it's some kind of, oh, it's got to be some kind of flavoring. And John Anilly was talking about that with those Sazerac Canadian whiskeys. He was like, there's some kind of almond extract. It's like a flavoring. And I was saying, yeah, it is there. Now, which one of these tastes better? Well, <laughs> if I had to pay $38.99 for a Virginia Black and $10.99 for a liter bottle of Kentucky Tavern, Kentucky Tavern would taste better to me, even if I had to convince myself, right, for that price disparity. But um, I did not pay that. I paid $9.98 for 750 milliliters of Virginia Black. $9.98. Which is telling me it's being lowballed and disc, not lowballed, what do you call it? Deep discounted to move it out. Clearance sale. I mean, if it's a if it's a thirty eight ninety nine whiskey and you sell and it, why would they sell it for nine ninety eight? 
We know why, because some warehouse has it um, and they're auctioning it off more or less, like putting the word on the dis distrib distributors and retailers intraweb, not something we see. And they're saying, man, I got all this back stock of Virginia Black. Anybody want it? <laughs> I'll, I'll let it go for 350 a bottle or, you know, and so then Savannah Discount's getting cases and cases of it and they're selling it for five. At least that's the theory I have. It makes sense. I believe that makes sense. Why would they have Gibson Select? Oh, I keep saying that. And then Shane Giggy's like, no, it's Gibson's Finest. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gibson's Finest Rare. 12 year age Canadian whiskey. Why would you have a 1.75 liter bottle for $9.99? And then Shane said, Well, in Canada, it's popular and it's 65 bucks a bottle. But that's Canada. This is the United States of America. And it might just be a, a dead thing, you know, like they can't get rid of it. You know, it's not a hot item if it's that price. It's a slow mover. They're trying to. But then there's there's some evidence that my argument might be flawed. <laughs> might be flawed. Because that same store, Savannah Discount, had the set. You, you got you, you had three seventy fives. And if you bought two. Okay, if you bought two of them, which is $7.50, then you got it for $7.99. And that was Wild Turkey 101. I don't know about you, but where have you ever seen Wild Turkey 101, a regular 750 milliliter bottle for $7.99? But then maybe that's not popular. I don't know if Wild Turkey's popular. Every once in a while you'll see a television commercial, not really too often. I, I know a guy at work that drinks it. But I mean, I don't see people drinking that. That's owned by Campari. Maybe Campari of Italy is saying, why do we buy this brand? King, but he's buying it, man. I don't mean, I don't know. I don't follow the industry that close, but um, that seems unusually low. $7.99 for a bottle of Wild Turkey 101. I don't know. Maybe Savannah Discount just gets strangely low prices for things. And I say people don't talk to me about liquor. People do talk to me about liquor, just not a lot. Like last night if, at the Southeastern Louisiana baseball games, I was watching Southeastern Louisiana University against Louisiana Monroe. And uh, Southeastern won both games Tuesday night, which I didn't go to because it was so cold. But they were those other guys were sitting up there. They said, well, yeah, we were bundled up. I said, there was no way I was going to a game and it was like 39 degrees at first pitch. It was it was cold enough last night. And I left in the seventh inning because we were winning seven to one. We, I mean, Southeastern, that's where I graduated from. And I said, oh, they got it, you know, maybe because <laughs> you know how those games go. But uh, they end up winning eight to one. But one guy la asked me last night, he said, you popped open that Cruzan yet? I said, I never bought the Cruzan. I just told you I saw it. I said, but I need to get it, you know, because he's always talking about Cruzan rum and he, he just loves it and he brags about it. But I said, I have such a back stock. It's going to be a long time before I get it. Unless I see it some, for some crazy price like a Savannah discount, I might buy it and jump the gun on it, <laughs> you know. But uh, I started looking in the rum and it's like a whole different world, which I knew it would be. And then I got people commenting from every direction. Well, what about this? What about that? And I got so overwhelmed by it. I said, I was just trying to stick my toe in the water. Now I'm over there in the deep end of the pool and I'm drowning in it. <laughs> so Virginia Black. I do like it. It's got <laughs> dark tobacco notes. Tea 
wood and some candy. I don't know. No, no. It's very strange. Very, 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 very strange. It's unlike any whiskey I ever tried in my life. Have you not a counter question? Might be, I'm always thinking like, what questions would people ask me? Have you ever tried a lot of whiskeys in your life? I mean, have you tried lots of whiskeys in your life? Well, I've tried a fair amount. Not exactly a lot. You know, you got some of these video websites. They've tried obviously hundreds and hundreds. But they've been in it longer. I've tried way more beers than them. They're not really into beer, so it would make sense. I've tried way more beers. That's just the way it goes. It's not like one's better than the other. It's just looking at different things. So, <laughs> yeah, you see, when I took that last swig, gulp, swallow, whatever, of Kentucky Tavern, that wood, that charred oak really shone, sh showed itself. So I'm thinking, yeah, that's bourbon, baby. You know, that's that's quintessential classic bourbon flavor, which you're not going to get. You're not going to get with Virginia Black. You could say, well, they're trying to mimic Hennessy, but then why would you do that? With whiskey, you know what I mean? Like, why wouldn't you just make brandy and have a, a Virginia Black Drake brandy? You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, would, it could just be American brandy, so that wouldn't even make any kind of sense. Uh, maybe Drake likes whiskey. I, I don't know anything about him. Okay, so um, is there a winner? Whoa, is there a winner? Man, I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know if there's a winner. They're so unlike each other. They, they, they're just too separate. Well, if I can't decide, then there's no winner, right? Like, I'm not going to sit here and just try to guess one. Okay. So it's a draw. No winners, no losers. If you're looking at price, then uh, get the Kentucky Tavern. But then in my case, I got that unusually low price. So, but still, the Kentucky Tavern was cheaper because we were talking about $10.99 for a liter. And I paid $9.98 for $7.50. So I guess if you're looking at the price only, Kentucky Tavern is the clear winner. Clear winner. On price. On price. On price. Robert Collins says, cheers, Jay. And then Dispersing Way says, cheers. Well, cheers back to you all out there. And uh, this was interesting. And um, uh, it, like, you know, it's kind of hard to figure this out. So Virginia Black will be back again next week. Going up against Jack Daniels, old number seven. Wow, that, I think that would be a in, pretty interesting video. And then Jack Daniels, number seven, the green label. Another interesting video. And then on Saturday, I'm planning to my next Saturday, the 16th, not this upcoming Saturday, the next Saturday, Saturday after next. That's how you that's how you say that. <laughs> uh, versus the old Forester. And that'll be interesting, I guess. And then we're going to take a break from these things and we're gonna do sir malcolm's blended scotch you heard that right sir malcolm takes on the scotch world sir malcolm blended scotch will take on the splendid scotch world and the first one it's gonna go against is buchanan's 12 year well of course you know sir malcolm will get destroyed <laughs> even though I said Sir Malcolm was much better than I had expected it to be. It will be destroyed by Buchanan's. But, and it will be destroyed by J and B, yes. But in the other contest, that will be, in, in, there'll be a very serious question there. It will kill Piper Dean. It will kill Piper Dean because Piper Dean is inferior. But the other ones will be real challenges. So I'm very interested. Bricks Lens 1970. How do Ron Aru? Well, I'm doing all right, gotta admit. The weather's a little bit too dreary for my tastes. And it's got a nasty dampness in the air. And I find that it's damn chilly out there. You say, well, it's only 64 degrees. 
Doesn't matter. You come down here with this super high humidity and you get 64 degrees. And if there's the slightest breeze in the air, it's going to shiver you. Look, I was talking to a woman from Minnesota. She teaches religion class over there. And she says, there's no kind of cold like she lives north. of. She grew up north of St. Paul. She said, you ever heard of that town? I said, no. But she told me where it was. I said, oh, yeah, I know where that is. And uh, not far from St. Paul. And she said, but down here, it feels colder than Minnesota. I said, what? She said, oh, it just kills me. It just chills me to the bone. The humidity is so bad. So in her mind, in a practical sense, she finds Louisiana is colder than Minnesota. That sounds crazy. And I've never been to Minnesota during the winter, so I don't know. But uh, it's just, the, I'm telling you, if you come live down here one winter and you feel this humidity and this chill, you'll see what I mean. You'll be like, oh, man, I'd be sick all the time. <laughs> Robert Collins says, Beer Taste Challenge 2019, is it on the horizon? I, I, it has to be on the horizon. It has to be on the horizon. I just have to figure out what I'm going to do. I got to look through all my records and see what I've done in the past. Man, I don't know. I got to see. But I want to do it. Seems like you know a lot about these products, says Dispersing Weight. I don't really know a lot. I know a, enough to make the video work a, a little bit, you see, but I don't know a lot about them. Yukon Jack for cold weather. Oh, yeah, I've seen that around here. Yeah, that's a liqueur. It's like a flavored whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cabin fever is also popular. Yep. Okay, well, time to go. Thanks for watching this video production, people. And everybody take care and have a good Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. What is that what people say on Facebook all the time? Thirsty Thursday. <laughs>